Hi, this is Patricia from Hayes Selling Machine Company located in Wilmington, Delaware. And today's project that we're going to show you how to do is a standard pillowcase cover. We're going to put in a couple extra features for you. We're going to show you how to do the hot dog or burrito method, whichever way you want to call it. And the neat thing about that technique is it actually finishes off this hem piece so you don't have raw edges showing where the hem is. Gives you a little nicer finish. We chose some nice, bright, fun, and kind of themed fabrics. And we're also going to show you how to do this on a serger, but you can absolutely do it on your regular sewing machine as well. So I have my two fabrics cut. The main part of the body case, the one that was three quarters of a yard, we're going to trim down to 25 inches. And then our accent fabric, which was a third of a yard, we're going to trim down to 10 inches. We also would like to trim the end part. Rather than cutting it specifically, I like to put my fabric on top of each other and take my two folds here so that they line up and then come over to my salvage edges because the salvages are going to be a little different on all the fabrics and I don't want it showing up in my hem. So right here is actually where the salvage is. So this is going to be where I'm going to cut and I'm going to do it through all the layers so they are nice and even. Even though it's a little bit smaller than 44 inches, because we're making a pillowcase, it really won't matter as much. You have enough room to play with. So now these are going to be exactly the same size. So to do the burrito method, we are going to open up our pieces. And this is going to look a little weird, so bear with us. You're going to take your accent fabric and lay it out. And we're going to open up our main fabric and we're going to take the one raw edge and we're going to lay it even with this edge here. And then we're going to kind of shimmy and fold this in. We're kind of rolling it. That's where I guess the hot dog slash burrito name comes in. And then we're going to take this and we're going to fold it in half. So we're going to have our main fabric trapped in here. To keep it together, we're going to use some pins or you can use the Wonder Clip, whichever is easier for you. You just want to make sure that your ends are kind of even. So I do tend to do the two ends first, just so I can kind of hold that in place. I have a little bit less shifting. And then I'm just going to do a little pinch with my fingers so I can kind of inch my way into the middle section and put another pin in there. And as I'm pinning, I'm trying to also scooch that extra fabric out of my way so I don't accidentally sew through it. And then we're just going to finish putting in pins. For this particular method, go ahead, put some extra pins or clips in. We're just going to pull them out as we get to them. Please do not sew over your pins. <laughs> I know a lot of people like to do that, but take the time to take your pins out. Especially if you're doing it on a serger. You don't want to sew through the pins. Or you're going to see your dealer for new blades pretty quickly. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm just folding to make sure that all three pieces are lined up together and that I don't have my middle fabric caught anywhere and I like having a little extra pins just because I want to keep everything out of the way. Okay, we're pinned, ready for the next step. So we're going to head over to our serger. I have it set up for a four thread overcast, just traditional, nothing special. And we're going to start tucking that first little section into our where our presser foot is. Again, pull out the pin. And whenever we're serging, we do want to cut off a little bit just to get a cleaner edge. 
You can also kind of hold your finger there. Kind of keeps it a little bit even. And some sergers will also have guides. just gonna roll right off the end so there is my really weird looking shape but it's okay we're gonna reach in and we're gonna grab all of that extra fabric and we're gonna pull on it and just keep pulling All right, so there is the first part done. So when you look at it, you'll see how it has kind of a clean seam on this end, and then a nice clean seam on that end. We're gonna head over to our iron, and we're gonna give this a nice press. And we wanna get that hem to be kind of nice and flat, so when we do the next step, we don't have any wrinkles, and everything is in there nicely. We can also iron out that fold at this point. And I'm just slightly pulling at the hem and trying to make sure I get underneath so I don't get any folds. And then I'm also going on the top part of the hem so I get a nice crisp edge. And then to get that fold out, if you're having a hard time getting that fold out and it's not doing um, a nice enough flat layer for you, we can grab some Mary Ellen's Bus Press. It's one of my favorite spray starch alternatives. And what's nice with this is it will help to get that crease out a little bit better. It comes in different flavors. I mean scents, I always say flavor, scents. You're not eating this, scents. <laughs> so uh, we tend to use the scent-free one, but there's also a lavender one, which is really popular. All right, so we are ironed. So now we have our piece ironed. We're gonna fold it in half, right sides together. So it's starting to look like a pillowcase. And the one spot where I really do wanna kind of make sure it's lined up nice and neat, neat is where this seam will come together for the hem. So I definitely put in a couple extra pins right there. Um, you could also, if you have your sewing machine handy, you could also do a little quilt tack there, which is just four or five stitches kind of going over that area. So that way when we go to sew on the serger, everything is layered nicely and that point is nice. I'm gonna put a couple extra pins in here. And then I'm going to put some more pins going all the way around just so I can keep everything kind of nice and neat. I don't need to worry about putting as many pins in as I did when I was doing my hem because I have a flatter spot that I'm working with. I'm not gonna have things getting in my way or worrying about the body getting caught. All right, we're pinned. I'm gonna start at the top section on my serger because this is really where I wanted to kind of line up the bust. So we're gonna pull our pin out. If you need to lift up a little, you can, but just kind of start right on the edge there. And pull out your pins as you come to them. We're going to go down the other side. I'm using this tail just to kind of help me feed it in. Pull the pins out.
So before we finish off our pillowcase, we have these little ends to deal with. You don't want to just cut them straight off because the thread will unravel. So two options. You can use spray check, which is a liquid sealant, and you just put a dab on the end here. And then also down at the bottom, you can do two dabs. Um, so for this pillowcase, I'm going to go ahead and do the fray check on the ends. So we're going to take our fray check, just put a couple drops on the end, and you want to um, let this dry about an hour or so, and then we can go ahead and cut the threads. Now for this top section, I'm going to show you a different technique, and that is working with the double-eyed needle. Because this is on the outside part, closer to the edge that's going to show, rather than making um, kind of that cut there where it may show up, I'm going to use the double-eyed needle. And for the double-eyed needle, it is exactly what it says. It looks like a needle, but it doesn't actually have a pointy end. It has two eyes and there's one right there and one right there so what we're going to do is we're going to take this end and we're going to and you want to make sure you're grabbing all four of the threads so I might need to go in a little bit better there and if you're having a hard time with the end if you fold it over it'll make it a little bit easier to put in so I'm just going to thread my needle and then I'm going to take the other end and we're going to tuck it underneath our stitches and we're just going to go as far as we can. Probably on this one I could just go all the way to the bottom of the hem. And then I'm going to pull on that and I'm going to keep a finger pinched here so I don't over pull. And we're just going to keep pulling, keep pulling. And can you see how it's going to hide that end so it doesn't unravel? But then we have a little bit of a prettier end up here. Let's get that a little bit cleaner. There you go. All right, so we are now ready to flip this over and take a look at our pillowcase. Give it a couple hard shakes. And go ahead to the iron, give it a nice press. But isn't that fun? I just realized that it's game control. Yes, isn't that fun? <laughs> and it's pink. <laughs>